This is Minecraft, but I cannot build my base outside of this red line. But we do have some special rules for this series. I'm allowed to bring one item or thing back to the base once every seven days, like this block of diamond, for example, or this lovely little sheep. Next, this is my base and its beautiful surroundings. We've set up two buttons with functions right here. On the left side, we've got parole time and on the right side, we've got prison time. When prison time is activated, I cannot leave my base, which kind of sucks. However, the parole time button right here sets me free. This is Minecraft Hardcore One Chunk. Hope you folks enjoy. One Chunk Minecraft Episode 2 To start things off, we've set ourselves three objectives. We need wool for our bed, I want to make an elevator and we need some armor. At the end of the last episode, we've got ourselves some sugarcane. I plan on moving these to the top of my house. We're going to put them on the roof, make things look nice and green. I'm still not sure whether I'll make this my final home or whether I'll build something else up top later on. Finished placing all the water on top and now it's time to place the sugarcane all the way across right up top over here. Okay, that bit's done and I gotta say I'm liking how this looks. Moving on. Heading over to our bedroom real quick, it's not much of a bedroom just yet. Don't even have the materials to make a bed, but at least let's replace these grass blocks with some stone bricks. And I gotta say, the view from this bedroom is amazing though. Have a look at that. What a view. I'm loving this space. Back to our farm section, I'm harvesting my wheat and slowly transitioning to fully potatoes. We'll try and get better and better food as we progress through these episodes. For decorative purposes, I decided to also add some plants at the sides of my house. We'll add wheat on one side and we'll probably add potatoes on the other side. I think I need one more seed. There we go. All right, other side, till the soil, and let's go plant the potatoes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and done. Not long after, a wandering trader popped inside my base. Unfortunately, he wandered off, but then he went back into my base, which means I can actually trade with him or grab the loot from him, since technically, this is within my chunk. Unfortunately though, he decided to jump down that hole, and getting him back up might be a little tricky. Lucky for me, somehow, he made his way up trapped him on a boat and let's see what trades he has beetroot seeds that's sort of the only thing that might be useful for now i don't have any emeralds just yet though so we'll figure this out later let's harvest some of our sugarcane and i do believe it's been seven days so it's time for my parole again the rule is once every seven days i can go out of my chunk and bring back one item or thing i wasn't exactly sure what i wanted this time but let's venture east of our base, beyond these mountains. And I do believe I see something that I'd want. Something that will contribute to the aesthetics of my base. That thing right there. Spruce is a must. Goes really well with oak and will make my base look a lot less monotonous. Alrighty, there's our sapling. Time to bring it back home. Gotta check my inventory, make sure I don't accidentally bring any other items. Alright, that's only one spruce sapling back home. I'm wondering whether or not this will grow, considering the ceiling is not too high, but well, we'll see. Gotta do our chores, stocking up on the potatoes, but more importantly, I'm doing this because I need some bone meal. I want to bone meal that sapling and just see whether it's working or not, and apparently, no. So I gotta figure it out. Bamboo chores real quick as these will be really important for my fuel. I did some research online and apparently using bamboo slabs is the most efficient way. And for our next food upgrade, it's time to roast our potatoes. I'm thinking we ought to upgrade to steak or something soon, but we'll see. For now, this is fine. Back to our objectives, armor. This is gonna be a tough decision. The thing is, iron is so limited in this one chunk. If I run out of iron, it's gonna be a problem. If I spend all my iron for a full set of armor, that's gonna be a bit silly as well. So I'm trying to think of an alternative solution here. Extra objective, I want to go to the nether. And the reason why I want armor as soon as possible is so that I don't die inside the nether. Zombie villager, that's given me some ideas. That might just be the solution to my iron problem, but it might be a bit daunting to build. We'll see whether or not I actually go through that route. I did some more mining and I found some diamonds. This time I smartened up a bit. Compared to the last episode where I just mined things straight away, this time I'm gonna keep them right here. I'll wait till I get fortune and then I'll mine them later. I'm gonna mark it with two torches 
so that I know where they are. When it comes to iron though, you know what? I I, I need them badly, so I'm, I'm just gonna grab them right now. Whether or not I use them to craft armor will be an issue that I think about a little bit later. It's gonna cost me over 20 armor to craft a full set of iron armor. That's really way more than I wanna spend right now, but I do have something in mind. An alternative solution. It's not exactly perfect and it's a lot of trouble, but I'm pretty sure it's the way to go. I dug deeper into my chunk and found this watery cave. It's with tridents. That's gonna be difficult. I got a decent angle and managed to slay most of them, but they keep on coming. Oh no, there's still one with the trident. In one of my very first hardcore episodes, I died to a trident. With no armor, those things hit really hard. I really needed the iron though, so I took the risk. Back up top, I was trying to decide what to do with my iron. One of my options was to build a cauldron. Why? Because I haven't found any lava yet. Heck, I'm not even sure if I have one in my chunk. So I might need to reproduce lava to build another portal. I haven't fully explored my caves just yet though, so I'm gonna wait just a bit. Pretty sure it's time for a parole again, so let's go explore. Apparently near that village we went on the first episode, there's a lava pool, so I can actually grab one lava right now, use a cauldron plus dripstone, and build another portal. But I'm still optimistic that I might find lava inside my cave, so you know what? This time around, I'm gonna bring home a cow. It's a huge upgrade in terms of food, and also, I can finally grab leather. I'm gonna need a pair of cows, but that's gonna have to wait another 7 days. I don't really have a proper area for my cows just yet, so for now, I think I'm just gonna keep them in the basement. You know what, I really need to make this base look a lot cooler soon, but necessities comes first. Let's go one floor down and set up a very simple cow farm. The usual one. For now, we're just gonna trap him in this corner over here. Up you go, and into that hole. I'll be back in 7 days. For now, back to mining. Yipes. The deep dark. I'll be honest with you, I've never actually played beyond 1.16. I'm a bit worried here. Does that mean the warden's nearby? I'll be honest with you, I have no idea. You know what, let's try and explore. Gotta sneak, right? Is it dangerous to break those blocks? Man, I have no idea. This might end up really bad. Or not. Lava! Perfect! Alright, problem solved. I can go to the nether already. And I don't have to waste one of my 7 day parole slots to grab lava outside, nor do I need to craft a cauldron. I'm really bad at building nether portals out of buckets of water, so I literally had to watch a tutorial while doing this. Lucky for me, I didn't mess up. There's our very first nether portal, let's light it up, and finally, we can slash one objective from the list. We're in the nether. But the real question is, are we actually nether worthy already? With no armor at all, that to me sounds like a recipe for a disaster. So I decided to go back to base and fulfill my other objectives first. I'm gonna light these parts with fire. In my mind, it's to deter any of those zombified piglins from entering my base. Although I'm pretty sure it doesn't work that way. I'm back in my basement and I'm filling an entire side of my wall with furnaces. I'm also decorating this floor and I filled up all my furnaces. I'm roasting some potatoes as well as making some building material. After all that mining, I'm pretty sure it's already been 7 days. So it's time to get our second cow. I'm sort of wondering whether or not it would have been a better choice to actually get my sheeps before my cows. Feels kinda weird not having slept a single day for the entirety of this gameplay so far. It is what it is though, we've already committed to the cow, so let's go take him home. I already stocked up on a lot of wheat, so we should be able to breed them pretty fast. Sugarcane for paper, combined with leather, and we can get books. That will be super useful. All right, in you go, buddy. Right. Okay, water. Yikes. No. <laughs> that wasn't the plan. All right, back inside, back inside. And the second one. Okay. I placed the fence up top, and all right. All right, all sorted. Let's start breeding. And of course, we also get our little achievement. Achievement made, the parrots, and the bats. Right, I won't be needing my wheat for food anymore for now, so let's just keep it down here to make breeding a lot easier. Next on the list is making our elevator. I'm still undecided on which materials to use. I have some stone, I do have smooth stone as well, 
got some deep slate. We can also use wood for the elevator, but I think that might not look too good nor sturdy. I went to my tree farm and finally my spruce grew. Now I gotta be a bit lucky here. Hopefully a sapling drops. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to go out and use my parole slot for another sapling. Where's my sapling? Oh, there we go. In my inventory. Perfect. Only one though. Two would have been nice to be honest, so there's still a 50-50 chance that I might screw this up. Hopefully the next tree will yield at least two sapling. A quick routine run on my bamboo farm as well. Pretty soon I won't be needing to farm these bamboo too much, I have quite a lot already in my inventory. When it comes to my potatoes though, I think I'm gonna need a lot, so I gotta keep farming these, I'll explain why later. Let's also add having steak to our objectives, so we'll have that pretty soon anyway. Nice little sunset, let's head down to the cows. Lots of loving happening down here, but I still need to get at least 24 cows before they yield any loot. It's time to build upwards again. I added another floor, unlimited water source on one of the corners, and filled the center bits with wooden slabs. I found this nifty little tutorial on this farm that gives you unlimited wool, or rather it's a string duplicator. Do you guys think these kinds of farms are fair? I'm genuinely curious. Do let me know in the comment section below. According to the tutorial, you gotta get the timing right and it's kinda hard, but I managed to do it the first time around. That's kinda neat. And I was shocked to see how fast this farm works. I'm starting to think this is kinda unfair. I mean, look at that production rate, it's insane. But hey, you know what, I'll take it. I really need a bed. Also, I probably won't be using the string for anything else anyway. And just like that, 25 wool. Finally, my very first bed. Oh my gosh, how many days has it been? I've lost count. You know what? I'm just gonna sleep right here. Won't even bother to go downstairs to my home. I need that sleep. Oh man, what a noisy place to pick for sleeping. But I'm so tired in game that it doesn't even matter. Achievement made. Sweet dreams. Finally. Oh gosh, that redstone sound is killing me. I guess the plan is to fill in all four chests, and as soon as I do that, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna cut off this farm. I can't stand the sound of redstone. And to be honest, at this rate, it shouldn't take long at all. And I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I'm so stingy with my iron that I didn't even build any hoppers. I'm literally just putting them in manually. Have a look at my hotbar and how fast it's getting filled up. Crazy, crazy drop rates. I AFK'd for a short while and filled up one chest already, just like that. Went downstairs to check on my spruce tree and it's fully grown already. Hopefully, this time, we'll get more than one sapling. We gotta get a bit lucky here, folks. We gotta get a bit lucky. Hopefully. Right, we got one. All right. Oh, three. Nice. Perfect. I'm gonna slowly transition this area into 50% spruce and 50% oak. Back to the ground floor, it's finally time to place our beds inside our room. Now, it's a proper home. Finally. Alright folks, it's finally time to get some rest, soak in a little bit of that beautiful view, and finally beds in my chambers. On top of that, I've actually gone to bed as well last night. As in, in real life. So today, we're starting fresh. Hopefully my voice is a little bit better today. Not sure if you've noticed, but I had a really raspy voice yesterday and uh, now that I think about it, it's just as raspy now. Also, we finally ticked one more thing from our objectives list. Wool and bed, done. All right, decision making time. Iron, iron, iron. What are we gonna do about this, folks? Are we gonna craft a full set of iron armor that's for just for the boots? but that's a little bit of armor. It's pretty decent, plus two. Totally considering crafting this. But I do have a second solution in mind, which is a total curveball. It's gonna be a lot of effort for basically minimal gear, but that might be the way to go. Fed my cows, and now it's time to start building upwards again. It's time to do my next objective, getting an elevator done for this one chunk base. My biggest peeve, however, is the fact that this elevator is five blocks wide, which means it's not perfectly flat center on my base. I love symmetry and the fact that there's one extra space between the left side compared to the right side of the elevator really bothers me. We're gonna have to cut through this farm floor. Um, not a fan because it already looks pretty good, but I guess we'll just have to do it. Yeah, we're just gonna have to cut through. This elevator is gonna have to go all the way up. Same thing applies for this bamboo floor. We're just gonna cut through, keep building upwards. I'm rather undecided on whether I wanna finish this elevator build now all the way to the world ceiling 
or later. But I figured, may as well do it at the same time. We're almost at world ceiling levels here, guys. Let's have a quick look at how high we are at this point. My phobia for heights is not making me feel comfortable here. I've also set up floors for each section and I'm now thinking about what things I should build on each floor. It's only the second episode and I'm already envisioning what I want for this base. And I can also already imagine the challenges that I will face in order to get the resources that I need to get things going. One step at a time though, for now, I want my steak, I want this elevator done, and we need our armor. Hopefully everything will be done by the end of this episode. Also, I'm pretty sure I wasted my parole opportunity. I'm pretty sure that was way more than 7 days, maybe even 14. So let's venture out. I added another item to my objectives, kelp. I'm gonna need this in order to get the elevator working quickly. I'm pretty sure I already know where to find this. Back to the waters, raft again, and all the way to the open seas. Not even sure if the river leads to the open seas, but upon inspection, here we are, and kelp in overabundance. Oh hey, and if you've watched this far and would like to see how this base ends up, do remember to subscribe. Alright, down we go and let's just grab one piece of kelp. Just one. And with that out of the way, we can cross out kelp from our objectives list. As per usual, I'm always a little bit late on the way back home. Hopefully not too late this time. Still no armor, don't want to face monsters. And we made it back just in time. So we're going to be using this kelp to turn the empty water blocks into solid or full water blocks whatever they're called. Sure as hell beats having to fill up about 200-ish blocks of water. I wanted to add another item to my objectives list. That skeleton horse has been sitting idle for way too long. So let's go find ourselves a saddle. Also, let's clean up our objectives list. Dirt block here and there. Fill in water from the top floor all the way to the bottom. The only solid water block is the one up top, so the kelp is gonna convert all of the water blocks into full ones. With the help of bone meal, this should be pretty fast. Now that I have multiple kelp, I can fill in the left and right sides of the elevator, and I'll repeat these steps for each sections of the elevators. Made a quick stop at my super noisy string farm. This thing has got to go soon, cannot stop it anymore should be full pretty soon i think it's already two full chests in no time we'll have four chests full of string all right let's go get the elevator done this might take a while because i gotta go up and down fill it in with water and then put kelp at the bottom and speaking of the bottom this is how far i gotta go there's still one two three four five five floors yeah five floors that's quite a bit this will be super useful though and finally for once I'd actually have a good excuse to use these water elevators. Right, this is gonna give me butterflies in my stomach. That falling feeling that you get when you're falling in your dreams. For some reason, it happens to me in game as well. Is that just me or does that happen to other people too? Let me know in the comments section. I was running low on fuel, so I did a quick bamboo run again, and I need more wheat to feed my cows. And of course, more wood for the rest of my build. I was actually considering building a cobblestone farm just like in my lucky block video, but I figured I could one up that. We'll do something else, build something more fancy. I think at this point we should already get some loot. Some leather. Oh, there we go. Steak. Finally. Should have one leather in that chest down there as well. Let's have a look. There we go, folks. Finally. I'm gonna wait till I have one stack of raw beef or steak before I actually cross it off my objectives list. We're back in the mines again. I was hoping to find some more iron, but instead... Oh no! And out through the smoke, I somehow survived. No idea how. Honestly, I'm not even sure if I put up my shield, but whatever. I'm alive. I'm alive. Back to smelting. I wanted a quicker way to be able to access my nether portal, so I dug straight down all the way to the bottom layer of my caves. Placed some water down there, and if I'm careful, I should stay alive right here. Here goes nothing. That's actually kind of fun, to be honest. I did take some damage for some reason, not sure why, well, I'm just glad I'm alive. I noticed something odd when I was in the nether trying to explore. Why am I taking damage? Youch. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on. Could it be the chunk limiter? I... I really have no idea. Let's try and break this block. Oh, I see what's going on. I see what's going on. My best guess would be the fact that there's no chunk border here in the nether but it's probably limiting me radius-wise. So I went back upstairs, flicked the parole switch, 
and I do believe this should fix my nether issue. Hopefully I can go beyond that one chunk and start grabbing some of the items that I need from the nether. Okay, successfully dropped down again, in we go, and now I'm pretty sure there should be no issue. There we go folks, the invisible wall is gone. I can finally go through and grab a few things from here. Brown mushroom, probably gonna need that, we'll take one. But here's what I came for. Soul sand. Got what I wanted, let's head back to base. Oh, and I guess that whole one item thing per seven days applies to the nether as well. So you know what? We're gonna have to throw that mushroom away. These two right here, we'll come back and grab some more later. The soul sand is so much more important for now. Off we go to the lava, and goodbye to the mushrooms. Back at the very top of our base. I'm pretty sure by now all the kelp should have fully grown on each of the elevator shafts. Now all we need to do is break the one piece of dirt that is separating each of the floors, as well as clearing the elevator shafts from the kelp. We'll do this all the way down, and finally let's place soul sand on this side. There we go folks, one side of the elevator shaft should be fully functioning already. Luckily, we found a magma block in our chunk, so we don't need to spend our parole quota for grabbing a magma block. So now, fully functional. Let's see if this works. Oh man, it's done. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Oh boy, it's taking quite some time to get from the ground floor all the way up. I'm still not there yet. Holy cow. Finally. Certainly not the fastest way to travel, but hey, it works. For some reason, the other side of my elevator is not working just yet. Probably a missing water block somewhere. I'm gonna have to figure that out in a bit. For now, gotta quickly feed my cows. I want my full stack of steak. So we're almost done with the elevator, but now we're shifting our focus into getting armor. I'm building a platform way high up in the sky and I better not fall, this would certainly spell instant doom. I took a quick trip downstairs to grab some extra materials, came back up, lit up the platform, and for good measure, I'm adding some walls towards the sides. Again, I don't want to fall. I built the base layer of my build and I'm building upwards. You guys probably know what this is at this point. Do pause and give a guess if you want to, but I think it's pretty obvious. To maximize efficiency, I decided to make two layers of this thing that I'm building, which by now you probably know it's an XP farm, more precisely, a mob farm. And the reason why this will help me with my armor issue is these mobs will drop some scrappy armor. It won't be anything amazing, maybe half broken iron, chain mail, or even gold armor, but hey, anything that works is fine. No, no, whoa, okay. Well, that that was that was close. That was close. I do believe I need to be a little bit more careful here. That would have been the end of the episode right there. Back to building, we need to get the second part of the XP farm done, the second layer. I also didn't want spiders to spawn, so I added some wool carpet here and there to prevent spiders from spawning on this XP farm. And I think we're just about done. Time to test it out. All right, folks, let's go down and see if this XP farm is working as intended. Or more importantly, is this elevator even working as intended? I can't go down? Nope. Oh, yikes, this is the wrong shaft. This is the one that goes upwards. No, oh no, I'm running out of breath. Quick, quick. Come on, I can make it, I can make it. I can make it, come on. No. Holy, my, oh my word, that was, that was stupidly close. Out of breath and half a health bar, I'm glad I'm still alive. On top of that, I'm also glad that the XP farm is working as intended. I want you guys to notice how stingy I've been with iron. I didn't even use hoppers here. I'm grabbing all the drops manually. We'll fix that issue soon. We'll fix that soon, but for now, armor first. The challenges of playing in one chunk. Hopefully by the end of the series, I can actually be fully decked. I'm not sure whether it's possible or not, or if it's actually efficient, but we'll try our best. As you can see, I've got decent bows and some decent armor as well. Gold, leather, nothing super amazing, but again, it works. And as an added bonus, I do get rotten flesh, arrows, gunpowder, and bones. I also just realized gold is actually the most finite resource in this one chunk because I can't actually farm gold anywhere. I'd need to go to the nether for that. So smelting these pieces of armor from the XP farm might be the only realistic way to get gold. 
Oh, yikes. How did that bugger go out? Oh, man. These guys usually hurt. Die. Die. Go on. Die. Okay. Oh, nice. Decent drops. That was worth it. Okay, now that I've fixed my elevator, I can confidently go down without dying. Give some sweet love to the sheep. And finally, it's time to reap my rewards. A full stack of raw beef that will certainly turn to steak straight away. I woke up the next morning to find a zombie trying to... What are you trying to do? Nice try, buddy. A quick showcase at our current armor. Golden helmet with some enchants. Fire protection is really good for the nether. Chainmail chest plate. Leather pants with protection 3. And chainmail boots with protection as well. I also brought a lot of backup because I'm pretty sure my armor will break pretty fast. And with that, I think it's time for us to head to the nether. And it's also time for us to tick off our objectives list. Steak done. Armor done. And let's not forget elevator done as well. I added two more objectives. Blaze Rod and Iron. Blaze Rod is the more sensible of the two. I really don't know whether getting an iron farm will be possible. We'll figure out how motivated I am by the end of this series and if possible, well, you know, having iron would always be good. And let's also get our first kill with a bow. There we go, take aim. I found my nether fortress and now it's time to farm for blaze rods. I'm pretty sure this is not gonna be easy. I usually have at least diamond armor when I do this. I know it's not necessary, but yeah, not used to this. Gotta make good use of the shield, make sure we don't take too much damage. I did get my first pieces of blaze rod. Let's go farm some. As predicted, in no time at all, some of my gear has already broken. I wonder how many of these I need to farm. I got five already. Oops, accidentally pressed my escape button. Have a quick meal. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No, again. No. Oh, that was clutch. That was clutch. What am I doing? I need to get out of here. Let's pull her up, pull her up, pull her up. Off we go, off we go. Can I make the jump? Can I make the... Oh my gosh. I was still stubborn and still tried to get a few more blaze rods. Honestly, at this point, I should have just gone home. Those were way too many close calls within such a short time frame. And I do have 9 blaze rods already, I shouldn't be too greedy here. I walked back to the spawner and 4 blazes spawned straight away. And in no time at all, I was taking a lot of damage again. At this point, I decided to just call it quits. Enough is enough, I don't want to end up dying in the nether. I was seeking refuge towards the side and I actually found myself my saddle. Sweet, I was actually hoping to find one of these in a fortress. They do spawn quite a lot in them chests. The two diamonds are pretty decent as well. I'm gonna carry all of these items just to the front of my nether portal where I will place a chest and store my items right here. So I won't be bringing more than one item per seven days, but to make life slightly easier, I don't want to walk all the way back to the fortress to grab one blaze rod each time. It would be boring for the viewer as well. So I thought, hey, you know what? Let's put these stuff in that chest over there and we'll decide what to bring. All right. All right, let's decide. First things first, let's put the blaze rods in here. Brown mushroom there, saddle there, and my diamond. Okay, I actually need the blaze rod first, but you know what, you know what, I think the saddle is the most fun. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm bringing today. Hey yo buddy, how you doing? We can finally have some fun now that I have my saddle with me. Been wanting to do this for a long time. Wasn't sure where to set up a proper stable just yet, so you know what, I think we can convert this side right here. And also my horsey right here gets a buffet of potatoes, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you know what, hang on, let me check if horses can actually eat potatoes. Oh, <laughs> I googled it up, and apparently potatoes are extremely poisonous towards horses. Well, lucky for me, this horse is already dead, I guess, it's an undead horse after all, so yeah, maybe he can eat potatoes. Have some fun killing some pillagers, and okay, maybe that's not such a good idea. These undead horses don't have much health, and I don't know how to feed them either. So yeah, that's that's half the health bar gone. Anyway, I got a lot more planned for this base on the next episode. We're gonna build to the world height limit and somehow get unlimited resources. It won't be easy in a one chunk world, but that's part of the challenge. Thanks for watching this far. If you're new here, do say hi in the comment section below. Drop a like if you liked it. Feel free to sub and see you guys next time.